going to do a really quick walkthrough of how I pulled together the data for this competitive analysis. So as I mentioned in the blog post, what I did was I went into Open Site Explorer by Moz.com, although you can also use Majestic or Ahrefs.com, whatever you want to use to pull together the backlinks for your site, or in my case, my client's site, as well as its competitors. I usually choose somewhere between three to five competitors. In this case, I actually redacted the data for my client because I didn't want to include that for obvious reasons. But here, what I did was from this column to the right, this is all the data that was provided by Open Site Explorer. And then I added two columns. I added a column that included the site domain and just to make this really simple and clean I just have the domain itself and .com or whatever the TLD is that's just to make it really clean and I just typed that in and then when I copied this data in then what I did was I just double clicked in this bottom right corner just to send it down to the bottom of the data set. And then what I would do is just press Control or Command down arrow to get to the bottom of the data set, move one line down, so I'll just do it here, although this is going to take me to the bottom of my entire data set. But then I would just go down one more cell and move over and then paste the next data set in for the next site, then come over here on whatever that site was I would just type it in and then double click to send it down and then just rinse and repeat. I'm going to press control or command up arrow to go back up to the top. So the next thing I did was I grabbed the domain from the link URL and I have a blog post where I explain how to do that. You just use the left function in combination with the search function to pull that out and I provide a link to that in the post as well. So then once I have all of this together, this is in pivot table format. So then I just went ahead and created the pivot table. I'm not going to go through all of those steps. I have an entire video tutorial on how to create pivot tables, which I also link to. Uh, but once I created my pivot table, and this is a custom format that I created with my branding. But what I did was I'll just go ahead and under options, pull up the field list. If you X out of it here, then you need to enable it again under field list. Okay, so looking at the pivot table field list, you can see how I have it organized. I just took domain, dragged it down to row labels, and one little buggy thing is if you don't pull down page authority and domain authority, whatever values you want to pivot. If you don't pull it down when you pull down domain, for whatever reason, it wouldn't assign the average page authority and domain authority to domain, only to site and link URL. However, I didn't like that because I wanted to order the entire table by the domain's domain authority. So the only way I could figure out to get around it was to pull down domain, then pull down page authority and domain authority, then come back and pull down site and link URL. So this is what it looks like in your pivot table. You see page authority and domain authority over here. And this is different from the default layout. The default layout is if you go under the design tab, report layout it's actually show in compact form I'm not going to do that because I don't want to take the risk of messing up my entire pivot table but I really prefer especially if I have more than one value in the rows I prefer the outline form because well I'll just go ahead and show you so the way the compact looks is you just have the data indented, but it's really compact and it can be very difficult to interpret even with my styling the second row to be in red 
and so on and so forth is just really jammed up so I don't like it uh, I'm just going to press Control Z hopefully that will get me back there we go so the tabular form is also pretty nice I just have a preference for the outline that so you can check them all out and see what your preference is so what you can see here is at the top level we have the domain and then you can see the sites and this is either my client or their competitors and if you have multiple sites ranking for one domain like you see here you'll see them both listed and then at the tertiary level you have the actual link URL so this is the page that the link is on that points back to whatever site we're looking at. So I like this layout because I can then sort by domain authority. You could also sort by page authority. I tend to like to sort by domain authority and the easiest way to do that on the PC is just right click on any cell in here at the top level and choose sort. Sort largest to smallest. And then if you have multiple values in one area, let's see if I can find one. Uh, and we don't want to do this, but let's say then in this level, we wanted these also sorted in descending order by page authority. Then you could right click any cell inside that group and sort largest to smallest and that will sort all of them so it will also sort this group and this group etc so that's just a really easy way to sort but i sorted by domain authority and then i just filtered out the wordpress.com sites by choosing label filter does not contain and then you see wordpress.com because I didn't want those to float up to the top. But the nice thing about doing this is that then I could focus first on some of the really high authority sites like .gov sites and CNN.com and Wikipedia and, and sites like that and see where they got their links and try to reverse engineer their strategy. So let's see, there was one like one observation I made was that the Guardian is pretty generous with backlinks. You can see that their competitors received quite a few backlinks. And so I encourage them to find someone from the Guardian to reach out to and have a contact there. Then another one here was a link that one of their competitors got from the National Park Service where when you go to this, you just see that they have a really cool resource that the National Park Service wanted to link to. They also had a link from Microsoft. And this was just a brilliant strategy. What they did was they created a landing page on their site for the convergence attendees. And it had all kinds of resources for New Orleans. And I just thought that was a brilliant idea that they could borrow from, let's just say. One last thing I'm going to talk about is how to actually record your observations and recommendations. So let's say you're going through the pivot table, you come up with these great ideas, and you want to record them for your client or boss. So at first what I tried to do was just type it out in the cells. So I was going to make a separate table over here. But then I noticed as I typed more text and it took up more than one line, then it was messing up the spacing of the pivot table. So if you have an observation that takes up three lines over here, then this line here is just going to be three rows deep. And so this would just look really jacked up. So I didn't like that. So I had to come up with an alternative. I'm not saying that this is the best or the most efficient. It's just what I came up with. So what I decided to do was to use a text box. Because a text box, you can put as much text in it as you want, and it's not going to mess up your pivot table at all or any other kind of table. So you just do that by going to the Insert tab 
and choosing text box. And then you have lots of different formatting options. But then what I wanted to do was actually point out where they can find it in the pivot table. So what I did was after I created a text box, I made that text box a link. So I just clicked on it. If you just press Control or Command K, it'll pull up a hyperlink menu for you. And then where you would usually add a URL, if you go to place in this document, you can link to a particular tab, and the tabs are listed here, or you can link to a particular cell, either on the worksheet that you're presently on or on another worksheet by just navigating to the cell and choosing it. So that's what I did here. I just linked to the cell in the pivot table that it referred to. Now just keep in mind, if you edit your pivot table or you filter, you're going to have to go back and update these. Another thing to note is if you change the tab names for whatever reason, you'll also need to update all of your hyperlinks. So now, if I click on any one of these links, like here it says the Guardian is generous with giving out links. I'll need to capitalize Guardian here. You can see it goes to that place in the pivot table so that my client can easily check out whatever it is I'm talking about. And here where I talk about the Microsoft link, if I click on it, it goes right to the Microsoft link. Or I could have linked specifically to that page. So uh, one other thing to note is, uh, let's just scroll back to the top. If you want to move these around, you'll need to right click because obviously if you click on one of them, it's a hyperlink. So it's going to take you somewhere. So I right clicked on it and let's say this is just out of alignment. It's a little tricky and very cantankerous, but if you want to select all of these to align them, just hold down the control key and click. And you'll need to hold down the shift key on a Mac, but you just keep right clicking, not left clicking. You hold down the control key or the shift key on the Mac and you right click and you can select all of these. Don't ask me why it's so weird to control right click is very unusual. But then you can see up here that we get this formatting option and there's an align option under arrange. So now we can align left and we can also distribute them vertically. And that's just going to give us nice even spacing. So there you go. That's how I pulled together my data and organized it in a pivot table and created annotations that would be useful for my client.